I'm Robert Cork and I'm into roots. Why does this root system have this here? Because it hangs in my kitchen when I'm not demonstrating with it. But this is a root system of a Cenothus shrub. And uh, you might be wondering what's wrong with this root system. Now if you say no tap root, you're wrong because less than 2% of all the trees and shrubs have tap roots. Most have roots that grow horizontally as laterals and they spread out in the top 12 inches of the soil. Here in the shrub, we got most of the roots in the top four to six inches, but a lot of trees, it might be down to 12, 18 inches, but usually the top 12 inches is at least 50% of all the roots of the tree. And without a tap root, the trees are depending upon the width of the root system for stability, as opposed to being anchored. Now there is an exception, there's three exceptions to tap roots. Oak, pine, and nut trees all have tap roots. But this scene of the shrub grew this way without a tap root, so it's happy. Now when the trees grow wider, when the roots grow wider, they're gonna have their root hairs out at the distant portion of the root system. And that's where the feeding happens for the water and nutrients. The water and nutrient absorption does not happen near the trunk because of two reasons. One, there's actually bark in the older root system and there's therefore not a lot of root hairs, if any at all. So a lot of people ask me about what's happening here. Are we getting a root graft? And what happens when roots graft together? So here's a piece of driftwood that washed up, but it shows a graft, a natural graft between two different roots. Now a lot of people think that that graft sends nutrition back and forth between the two roots, but it doesn't. A little bit of nutrition might migrate a tiny bit into the other root, but in reality, the grafting is a naturally occurring effect and it adds more to the structural integrity of the trees uh, in the forest, so to speak, and not the transfer of nutrients.